Hey there. In this video, we are going to continue looking at solving radical equations. The focus here is going to be on equations that have more than one radical in them. Now, to solve an equation that has several radical terms in it, we are going to use a similar approach to what we've used before, except that we're going to have to repeat the process a couple of times. So what I mean by that is uh, we're going to have to isolate one of the radicals, as we did before, uh, and then square both sides. But then there's going to be a radical that's left over, so we're going to have to isolate the remaining radical and then square both sides again. And then we can go about solving it as we usually have and checking our solutions at the end. So for this equation right here, there's two radical terms. I am going to choose to isolate this one on the left side by moving this to the other side. So it is going to become square root of x plus 21 equals square root of x plus 3. I am going to square both sides of that. Squaring the left side, I am going to get just x plus 21 because the square root squared is just the thing itself. And on the other side, I have to square this whole thing as a binomial. I can't just square each piece separately because it's two terms. If it helps you, you can actually write write it out. Square root of x plus 3, square root of x plus 3 and multiply it out. Or if you like to use the kind of the box method to multiplying binomials, you could do that. Square root of x plus 3, square root of x plus 3. Whichever method you use for that is fine. Either way you think about it, root x times root x gives you x. And you have 3 times root x and another 3 times root x, which gives you 6 root x together. And then you have 3 times 3, which is 9. So our next step then is we need to isolate this remaining radical here and then square both sides again. So I'm going to get rid of the other terms on that side by moving that to that side. Since there's an x here and an x here, instead of just moving them, I can subtract x from both sides and these are going to just cancel out like that. And then when I move the 9 over, it's going to become minus 9. I'm going to have 12 on this side. So I am going to have 12 equals 6 root x. Since they're both single terms there and one of them has the 6, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. If I divide both sides by 6, I'm going to get square root of x equals 2. And then I have to square both sides again. And if I do that, I'm going to get x equals 4. All right. Before I say that that is my final solution, I need to check that that 4 works in the original equation. If I put it in for x, I'm going to have square root of 4 plus 21, or in other words, square root of 25, which is 5, minus square root of 4, which is 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So since the two sides are equal, x equals 4 is my solution. Let's try one more. This one's going to be a little bit more involved here. But the process is going to be exactly the same. First, we're going to isolate one of the radicals. I'm going to choose to isolate this radical. So I'm going to get rid of this 1. Or in other words, I'm going to take 1 away from both sides, which is going to leave me with square root of 2x minus 3 on this side and I have 3 minus square root x plus 2 on that side. At that point I can square both sides. If I square this side that's the easier side to square because it's just going to give me 2x minus 3. This right side is going to be a little bit trickier to multiply out. Uh, if you like writing it separately over here you can. Or again, if you like using the box method, you can. You have 3 and minus root x plus 2. And you have 3 and minus root x plus 2. I'm going to write in this one this time. You have 9. You have minus 3 root x plus 2. And you have minus 3 root x plus 2, which is minus 6 root x plus 2. And then minus root x plus 2, minus root x plus 2 is plus x plus 2. 
So I can put that on the end, plus x plus 2. I don't need to put brackets there because it's a plus in front. So we've eliminated one of the radicals. Now we have to isolate the second radical before squaring again on both sides. Now what I'm going to do is move this term to the other side just because I want that term to be positive. find that easier to work with. That's going to give me 6 root x plus 2 on the left. I'm going to move this stuff to the other side, which is going to mean that I have, I'll keep track of everything here, I have my 9 that was already there. I have my plus x plus 2 that was already there. And then this stuff moving to the other side is going to mean I have minus 2x plus 3 because those signs are going to change when I move them to the other side. So if I gather all that together, I have plus x minus 2x is minus x. And my all my numbers together there are 9 plus 2 is 11 plus 3 is 14. So I have minus x plus 14 is 6 times root x plus 2. Or you could choose to write it as 14 minus x if you like writing it like that better. Now I could divide by this 6 here. But what's going to happen then is I'm going to have a kind of an algebraic fraction here and I'd rather avoid that. So since this is a single term over here, it's just the 6 times the square root. I can square that as is because it's just a single term. If I square this, it means it's just going to be 36 times x plus 2. I don't have to do this because it's not two terms. There's not a plus sign in here. It's still just one term. On the other side, if I square this, that is two terms. So I am going to need to do this. It is going to give me 14 squared, which is 196 minus 28x plus x squared. If we continue past there, 36x plus 72 equals 196 minus 28x plus x squared. It's a quadratic that we're going to have to do by factoring our quadratic formula. So I'm going to move this stuff to the other side. I'm going to get minus 36x here, and I'm going to get minus 72 there. So what I'm going to have is x squared minus 64x, and this is 124, and then that'll leave me with 0 on that side. I have x squared, if I put it in order of terms, 64x plus 124 equals 0. You can try and factor that or use the quadratic formula. It does happen to factor. I know the numbers are fairly big there to try, but I will tell you that it factors to x minus 2 and x minus 62. If you didn't realize that that factored, you could easily use the quadratic formula to, to come up with those numbers. And the numbers you would get are the solutions that these factors produce, which are x is 2 or 62. All right? Now, before we say those are our final solutions, again, we need to check. So we're going to check in our original equation here, the, the two values there. So if we write this out, except we leave a space to sub our number in there. And on the other side, we do the same thing. So if we put our number in there, if we put a 2 in there, and we put a 2 in there, and we work through that, we get 1 plus square root of 4 minus 3 is 1, right? 1, minus, 1 plus square root of 1, 1 plus 1, which is 2. On the other side, we have 4 minus 2, which is 2. That works. So that one works. If we try our other one in there, 62, 62. This is square root of 124 minus 3, or in other words, square root of 121. And then if we add our 1 on there, it's 1 plus 11, or 12. On the other side, we have 4 minus, this is square root of 64, which is 8. So this gives us negative 4. These are definitely not equal. Not because we did something wrong, 
just because squaring both sides either there or there can create extra solutions extraneous solutions that aren't actually solutions to the original so this one we need to reject that and then just say that we have one solution to this equation which is x equals 2 all right so that is solving radical equations with more than one radical term in them